All right, here we're going to set up um, set up some things. And so we can set up the customer defaults by going into customers and set up customer defaults. These are the defaults for all the customers. Then each customer can then be customized, uh, but these are, we want to say this is our general policy for customers as a whole. And so if we want 2% 10 net 30, then we would set that up as being our default for all the customers. But then if there's one customer that I'm going to have something different, I would just, when I set that one customer up, I would customize their terms and conditions. Okay? The sales account that is our main sales account, we would set this up as a default. Our discount account for sales discount, we would set that up. Which do we want to use? And again, these things can be overridden when you get to a particular situation, but these just set up the default. So you're going to want to do this um, when you very first set up the company uh, in the first place. Okay? Uh, there's account aging. Typically, you're going to have an aging schedule print out. And this is asking you, how do you want that aging schedule to look like? And this is saying that uh, the first column is shown um, how many uh, days past due from zero to 30 days past due. All the customers that owe us money that are less than 30 days past due, their total will show up in this first column. The second column will be all the customers who owe us money that's over 60 days past due. And the third column will show all the customers that are between 61 and 90 days past due. And the fourth column will show all the customer amounts that um, have been owing to us for over 90 days. Here's our custom fields. We talked about this in the first part of these YouTubes. And here's where you could change your questions. Finance charges. What if a person pays us late after the 30 days? Do we charge them a late fee or a finance fee? Um, if so, how much is that going to be? What account do we want to put it in? That's all on this um, form here. The pay methods that we accept at our store, um, Bellwether Garden Supply accepts cash, check, American Express, Discover, MasterCard, and Visa. Okay? Some or all of those might not be accepted by whatever company you're trying to set up. So here's where you can say what you do accept. The other thing that we have to set up in the beginning besides the customer defaults, are the sales taxes. So um, let us, let me go to a different company. So in this um, company, I'm going to go ahead and set up sales taxes. So um, I'm going to click on sales tax, and it, it allows me to do a bunch of different things. I want to set up a new sales tax, so I'll leave that bubble there and hit next. What is the total rate that you will charge? Okay, and so in South Carolina, our state sales tax is 6%. But various counties have allowed for an extra 1%. So including Orangeburg County charges 7% sales tax. So the whole 7% goes to the state of South Carolina. And then South Carolina sends back the 1% back to Orangeburg County. And then they can use that um, extra money on whatever projects that they're doing. So um, if we wanted to charge a total of the 7%, uh, we would put that in there. Now, 
this says how many rates make up that. Well, technically, we have two. We have the state of South Carolina, and then we have the county rate on top of it. And that was the same with Bellwether Garden Supply. But for your project, you can just say one rate. Okay? Now, this is the sales tax agency ID. So we have to have an ID code for the sales tax agency. The sales tax agency in South Carolina is the South Carolina Department of Revenue. So we'll use SCDOR as being our, um, our sales tax agent. Okay, now they want us to spell that out. So I'm South Carolina Department of Revenue. Okay, which vendor do you send the taxes you've collected to? Well, that would be South Carolina Department of Revenue. Now, I hadn't already set that vendor up in this company, so I'll have to go to new. It'll bring up my maintain vendors window. Put in this vendor, SCDOR. SC Department of Revenue. Okay, what account are we going to use whenever we pay the South Carolina Department of Revenue? We want that to go to sales tax payable. Now, I don't have a sales tax payable, so I'll have to say new and start up a sales tax payable account. Now, it's a liability, so it's going to start with a 2. I have a 202 already, um, so I'm going to use a 205, and we're going to call that sales tax payable. The account type is a current liability. It's a liability because we owe out, and it's current because we're going to owe it out within a year or less. Typically, whatever sales taxes you collect this month, you're going to owe by the 20th of next month to the state of South Carolina. Okay, so now I can put this expense account, and that's going to be the sales tax payable account. Okay, I don't really need any addresses, history, or purchase information uh, with these. So we're good to go for right now. We can say save and close. Now we can fill in this vendor. Okay. Okay, our sales tax calculated for this agency, and we said for your project to just use a single rate, and again, you have to put in the 7%. Okay, select an account to track sales taxes. That's going to be our sales tax payable account. Okay, again, it's, it has you put the stuff in several times. Then we put in the SCDOR, it's the sales tax ID, and this is South Carolina Now some states have a bunch of different ones. We saw with Bellwether Garden Supply, they had all those different county ones, so you would have to set up a sales tax ID for each county. Okay, so here it shows all, do you charge sales tax on freight? The answer is generally no, you do not charge sales tax on freight, just on the item that you're selling. So here everything is good and we click on finish. We get back to this original screen and now we can say close the sales tax wizard. And so our sales tax is now set up so that if we go into a sales invoice. Okay, we hadn't had an accounts receivable for this, but if we had had one, we could go into the sales invoice and it would show that we could do the sales tax.